Hello. In this video, we will discuss Asteya. Asteya is the third of the Yamas, and it's often referred to as non-stealing. The first thing that comes to mind is um, physical belongings. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. And at a surface level, this sounds entirely legitimate. Most of us would agree that one should not take the things that don't belong to them. But I want to discuss nuances, of course, and give things to consider beyond what is just at the surface level, right? The world is very complex. There are many shades of gray. We have to take context into consideration. And there's many, many aspects to life that complicates things, um, sometimes to a degree that we would prefer not to have to address or to deal with including our relationships, including um, our practice. But physically, let me turn this around a little bit and I'll propose a couple scenarios to you. Um, and they're mostly rhetorical questions. I don't really, um, I'm not fishing for an answer. I just want you to think um, and to process uh, the concept a little bit more deeper than what's on the surface. So scenario one, would you begrudge someone who is starving, perhaps a homeless person who, who hasn't had their meal for the day, would you begrudge that person from stealing food from, from somebody, from some establishment in order to feed themselves? Granted, if someone was in desperate need, I believe in most cities, most places in the world, they could find someone that would come to their aid. But in the same breath, that might not always be a possibility. So the, the question is posed, is it wrong for someone who's starving to steal food? And yet another rhetorical and hypothetical question, is it wrong for you to steal something that was initially stolen from you? So you're stealing it back. This one is a little bit more ambiguous than the previous example um, on most accounts we would not feel that stealing something that was originally taken from us is, is stealing at all. It probably falls under a different definition. But here's another example that probably gets to all of us in some degree, especially as yogis, we're generally very conscious about how we interact in the world, the types of products we buy, the types of organizations that we support. So hypothetically speaking, of course, is it okay to steal or essentially cheat on your taxes if the government that you live under is going to spend those taxes predominantly on weapons of war? But besides from war, there are an extensive list of subjects and topics that our governments probably spend money on that we have ethical concerns or problems with. You simply have to fill in the blank and you could extrapolate this concept uh, to infinite levels. You know, when, when you have organizations that, that oversee and govern millions of people, there are going to be lots and lots of competing interests. So where is um, an ethical or acceptable place to draw that line? However, to go deeper down the rabbit hole that is Estea non-stealing, let's look beyond physical things, whether it be items, possessions, or money, and let's instead consider time and energy. So by this point in your life, um, you've probably experienced a relationship where you felt that your partner or the other person in the relationship was not as equally invested into the relationship as you are, or you are. And the result is that you probably feel or felt like they were essentially wasting your time. Perhaps this is even you, or an experience that you've had in the past. Have you ever found yourself staying in a relationship, even though you knew deep down inside that it wasn't the right relationship for you. It wasn't what you were ultimately looking for. 
but you stayed in the relationship longer than you should have simply because you didn't want to be alone or you weren't ready to deal with the consequences of ending that relationship, whether it was an argument, a fight, or moving to a new location and all the problems that come with ending a relationship. Have you found yourself on the other end of that? Were, were you responsible for stealing someone's time, wasting their time, um, involving yourself in a relationship that, that you didn't intend to work on forever for, for whatever reason? Another type of example of this is what I call the emotional vampire. Um, I describe this as the person um, that, you, that you typically tend to avoid because you find that when you spend time with them and you're finished with that expenditure of time, you feel exhausted. You feel like they have drained, zapped, and sucked every amount of energy out of you. Emotional vampires. These are people who often focus on negative aspects of life or they're very cynical. They have a lot of things to complain about and just being in their presence wipes you out. These are hard people to be with and, and if you can recognize these things um, occurring through your own past experiences, then you can also be aware of taking them on yourself. I'm sure all of us at times fill the shoes of the emotional vampire as well. And one thing that I want to bring up here is uh, what I call one-upmanship. So this, this occurs when someone approaches you and they're excited about something that they accomplished or something that they achieved or something that, happens, something that happened to them. And they want to tell you about it. They want to share with you their experience. And instead of just listening to that story and being genuinely happy for that person, we have a tendency to practice one-upmanship. We say, well, that's great. But one time, the same thing happened to me, only it was bigger, only it was better. So you take the wind out of this person's sails and you try to make them feel less than or build yourself up because you want to um, perhaps receive the same type of support that they were initially seeking and telling you the story in the first place. Be really aware of this in your lives and your relationships and try to avoid it. Try to make people feel good about themselves. Try not to knock them down or lower them um, down a peg from, from whatever it is that they're experiencing. Allow people to have their successes Practice being genuinely enthusiastic and happy for your friends and family when they're proud of something or when they achieve something. And of course, as yogis, I think it's very important um, for us as a practice in general to be aware of our karmic balance. And know that, that if we are living in a way that steals from others, um, be it physical or emotional, or steals from um, the earth as well? Are we living in a way um, where we are consuming more than what's necessary for us to consume? And I'm not talking about the type of judgment that, that you might have um, or that might occur as a result of, of these activities. It's not about comparing yourselves or trying to win anything. You know, there's no medal for being the most carbon neutral person. Well, there might be, but that's not the point I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is that don't compare yourselves to others in this regard. Just be aware um, if you're using more than necessary and, and do your part to, to be a good citizen of the world, to be a good yogi, to be aware of, of stealing, to understand um, all of the consequences involved with that, whether it is physical or emotional, and all the complexities in between. Stay up.